Hello, VAC fans. So, hopefully, you see what's on my screen and you hear my voice. This is going to be uh, a little bit of a talk fest, but I'll try to keep it as, I guess, light and peppy and fresh as possible. So, I was taking a look at the European Commission, I guess otherwise kind of referred to as European Union, these little placards here that indicate the quality of a vacuum. And I just made one up here and see here's the VacLab E1000 and it gets all perfect ratings. It gets a fantastic rating here for power usage, meaning it uses almost no power. Here it is right here, 10 kilowatt hour per annum. Perfect for dust re-emissions, perfect for carpet, perfect for bare floor, and it hardly makes any noise. Okay, so that vacuum cleaner doesn't actually exist, of course, but what does exist is, how can I put this? Um, I don't have a criticism per se with how they do their tests. Well, I do, but I'm not gonna get into it here. My criticism is how they classify their tests. So if you happen to go to this web link right here, and I'll put it in the description, if you go you know, several pages down, you're going to get various tables. So right now I want to talk about dust re-emission classes. And that has to do with this right over here, what's coming out of the back of the vacuum, so to speak. So <clears throat> they go and they have a DRE, dust re-emission class, and it's less than or equal to, and you know, uh, over in the United States here, instead of a comma, we use a period, but I mean, you guys are gonna figure it out because you're over in the EU, so you know what common period swaps are. 0.02%, and you have ranges for each class. Now, the problem I have isn't that they test a vacuum and it comes within these ranges. The problem is, look at these grades assigned. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and the differences are very tiny, especially from the B to the F category. That's tremendous. Uh, I cannot recommend any machine that actually has a DRE of greater than or equal to 1%, because that could mean maybe it re-emits the dust, I don't know, 2%, 10%, 50%, well, hopefully it's not anything like that. And a machine like this is going to be almost unobtainium. It's going to be very, very difficult to actually get. And even if you do get one, uh, it may not stay that way as it ages. So let's actually interpret the results up here. This is the table that you actually see on the web page when you go to this link. So let's actually go and you see how it has a range right here, say range from 0 0.02, 0 0.08. I'm going to go ahead and average and put something in the average of all these ranges. Well, not average of this per se. Uh, well, I guess I do an average of one up here because the difference between 0 0.02 and 0, that is 0 0.00, would be 0 0.01. This one here, it would be the difference between, um, say, 1% and 0%. So that's going to be close to 50%. But specifically, I really want to concentrate on the B through F ranges. <clears throat> So let's go up to here, dust, average dust re-emissions. Now what you've got is if I reinterpret what they have and I pick a middle value, I have 0.01% for an A. Again, that's in the middle between 0 and you know, 0 0.02. Here's middle B, middle C, middle D, so on and so forth. And here's a middle G. That's 50% dust re-emissions. It could be greater than that. It could be worse than that. The DRE says down here, it's greater than or equal to 1%. So that could be something really terrible. So let's turn this into something we understand, average cleanliness. So I just subtracted this from 100. So what do you get? You get an A machine is 99.9% .9 clean. That's really fantastic, hence it only re-emits 0.01%, not 1%, not a tenth of a percent, that's one hundredth of a percent. Look at the B, right? You see how similar these are? That's the first thing I really notice. 
look at between a B here, right, and look at between an F. I mean, that difference is hardly anything. That's just absolutely amazing. So you have 99.2, and that's an F. I mean, that's a complete fail. I don't know about you, but 99.2% cleanliness, or a loss of 8 tenths of 1%, isn't a fail to me, especially when a B machine that you might expect to pay a lot more for is 99.95 or a loss of 0.05%? I mean, look at the difference. That's absolutely incredible. So, you know, you can go and you can pause this and take a look at these specifications. This is absolutely a ridiculous, ridiculous grading scale. So this brings me to my next point. The typical grading scale, and I understand that Sometimes A's start at 90%, sometimes they start at 92% or 93%. So this is just kind of a ballpark figure. But we normally think of somebody getting an A, a being in, say, the mid-90% range. A B, mid-80% range, and you get the idea. Now an F would be an average, since I'm picking averages, it would be between, say, a 60% and lower. That could mean a 0, that could mean a 60. So the difference between a 0 and 60 is about 30%. So when you look at a grading scale, you think an A is a definite difference, uh, say about 10%. Between that and a B, right? And between a B and a C, about 10%. C and a D, about 10%. F, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, did somebody actually just not show up to class one day and say get a zero? Did somebody get a 30%? We have no real, no real idea. So I certainly wouldn't recommend uh, something that is, well, here it's going to be returned as a G. But take a look at that. Do you think this is really reasonable? A, 95%. Well, an A up here is 99.9. .9. Now let's take a look at a B, 85%. Well, what's a B here? 99.95. A C, 75%. Definite differences. But a C here is 99.86. And then I'll go and do a D before you're all falling asleep. 65%, right? But a D here is 99.72. That's absolutely amazing to me. That's totally misleading people. You come over here and you look at dustry emissions and you see a machine that gets an A, if there is such a thing, and you see a machine gets a C and you go, well, that's, that's a significant difference. I'm going to pay a lot more money for an A to a C. Or you see a machine, say, that gets an F. Like, say, the last time I was able to find a Kirby Avalier, they have that actually as an F rating. But an F means, to me, a complete fail. It means it's putting out so much garbage that the last thing you would want to do is run this in your house. But an F means it's 99.2% clean. And since you're going to be running, hopefully, one of the HEPA synthetic bags, that 0.8% dust re-emissions is most likely going to be almost completely carbon dust, which is totally non-toxic. So, I don't know, maybe an F at 99.2 is a good thing if you look at it one way. Maybe an F at 99.2 is a terrible thing because now you can actually see what the carbon dust re-emissions are from a machine that's a dirty air machine. So if you see a dirty air machine, um, uh, like I suppose a Royal or a Sanitaire or maybe an old Hoover convertible, which of course they're not going to rate at this point in time, obviously because they don't sell it new. It's possible that if you use a HEPA bag, you may be at a 99.2% cleanliness dust re-emission level. That's fantastic. Now let me show you how ridiculous dust re-emissions uh, could actually be. Now you've seen me go and use, right, my particle counter. And in the vac lab basement, I can have an average particle count, 0.3, of about 10,000. Now in some cases I've seen it as low as 4,000. Sometimes I've seen it 20,000. I guess if I'm repairing something, things are getting dusty. So guess what? If I take a dust count of 10,000, which is really clean to begin with, okay, super ultra clean, and I have a machine 
that gets a DRE of an A. That means my counter, right, would go all the way down from 10,000 to a 1. Just 1. Now, if I have, a, say, a Kirby Avalier or any other machine that's using a HEPA bag, and it's just doing carbon dust emissions, and that's all it's doing, and say it gets an F rating from, from the EU, that would mean my particle meter would go from 10,000, let's take this down to an F, it would go from 10,000 down to an 80. Yeah, just an 80. In other words, far less than 100. I mean, you're talking near hospital clean rooms. And of course, a G rating, yeah, don't, don't get a machine that's rated a G, because <laughs> you don't know what that's going to be. Again, this is, these are average ratings, because there's quite a wide range when you see something down here that says greater than or equal to 1%. You don't really know what that means. So, after all this blah, 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 and you know, there's going to be five people that are going to jump up and down and watch this and go, yay, this was great, and maybe 100 views after like a month, and the rest of you have already turned off to go to something else, because this isn't a vacuum cleaning video. Let's take a look at the average dust re-emissions category as VacLab would prefer to have it. Okay, if you look at HEPA standards, all right, things that are like say H10, right, or maybe H11, or H12, or H13, you will see numbers that will roughly follow something like this. Now it's actually a three at the end instead of a one. It's actually a three, but look at the scale. All right, so you have a thousandth of a percent, right? You have a hundredth, you have a tenth, you have one percent, and you have don't go there. So look at the cleanliness if we look at it now, right? If it would follow a general HEPA scale. 99.999, okay, you're pretty much not ever going to get a vacuum that's going to do that. Or if you do, it will only do that once. And then when you empty the bin, because the seals are all dirty now, right? And the filters are getting dirty, it's not ever going to do that again. So that's another reason why this is somewhat misleading. But look at this. It's a factor of 10 each time. So you have an A machine, literally would be hospital grade standards. You would have a B machine. Now, 99.99. Okay, that's kind of up here. Right? That's, that's possible. Now you look at a C machine. 99.9. .9. That's only a tenth of a percent dust re-emissions. This is very, very similar to anything up in here in this range. That would probably mean that most vacuums that are in reasonable condition would probably make it into the C range. Some might make it into the B range. I think A range is probably unobtainium. Have you ever heard that term before? So I think the best machines would probably be in the B range. The C range, uh, that's going to be the vast majority of machines. And well, based on, based on this, right around in here, you're going to be right around, and again, this is the average, right? This isn't a spot-on value, it's an average. You would have most machines be right around in here, and I don't think that would be doing the public a disservice. A D machine still would be okay, but you'd be at a 1% uh, dust re-emission level. That just isn't horrible either. And then, of course, an F machine, eh, don't, don't go there. So, all right, so I'm done with this massive talk fest. I hope this has made a difference for the three people that like it and for the other hundred people that will look at it and go, well, that was somewhat interesting, but I want to see them do something with the vacuum, like shampoo a carpet or something. And uh, again, I'll put this link down at the bottom. Um, I have a lot more of these I would like to actually do. This is just dust re-emissions. I can go and do all the rest of these that, that are in here, like, say, a power table or maybe, um, oh, I don't know, hard floor, that kind of deal. Uh, but this is where I wanted to start. So anyway, thanks for watching and happy vacuuming.